A lot of work goes on behind the scenes at Oklahoma State University's research stations. With 18 spread throughout the state, each one conducts different tests and trials for its part of Oklahoma. The research interests are so great and, and diversified that it's, it's just unbelievable to go to our research stations and see everything from cropping systems to tree production to cotton research to working with vegetable crops over in the Bixby area. It's just so diverse and we're just so thankful for the research station system that we have and the support that we get. The stations are not only used for hundreds of projects every year, but to provide producers with information, information to help them do their job of feeding the world more effectively. We have close to 100 field tours every year on all of the stations combined. And we have an opportunity to get this information out to the public, let them see what's really going on. And I really encourage our producers just to stop in, visit with my station superintendents, look around. This is a chance for us to look at our research, determine best uh, practices, best varieties, some of the, the best opportunities for our producers to, to make money uh, economically and make the right decisions. We take the risk uh, doing the research trials, so to speak, on a small scale basis, and then we're able to apply that large scale out uh, across the state. To see the stations in action, SUNUP recently made a trip to the Southwest Research Station in Altus, where they study everything from irrigation systems to cotton. We feel that uh, we want to be the go-to people when they have a question about cotton or any other crops that we work with out here and uh, to do that we've got to be uh, we got to stay up with them we got to know what's going on we attend a lot of meetings put on a lot of meetings and uh, gather a lot of information and then try to uh, extend this out to the producers we took a tour of the station and our first stop led us to a cotton fertility project JC, it looks like uh, this is a place where you do a lot of your fertility testing out here. That's right. This, this one area right here has been uh, active in an active test for almost 40 years, 37 years I believe now. It's divided into uh, many small plots or six rows wide by about probably 40 or 50 feet long. And uh, the same treatments have been applied to these same plots over this entire span of time. And this gives us an idea over a long period of time how much fertilizer, specifically nitrogen, is required by the cotton plant. Yeah, and you're testing nitrogen, but you're also testing other nutrients as well? That's right. We're testing nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Um, so as far as nitrogen goes, we're seeing really evident difference out here. Nitrogen, of course, is, uh, is required for growth of the plant and uh, nitrogen will give us that nice green color. And what we're seeing here is a, is a much taller plant, uh, much, much greener plant, and it's got more blooms on it and, and more fruit on it. Yeah. So these nitrogen rates and what you're doing here has uh, played a big role in, uh, I guess, recommendations around the state and, and for producers? That's right. Uh, the results from this test is what has been used by our soil, soil fertility people to set fertilizer recommendations for the state. And, and those are, I guess, right now? And, and our recommendations now, primarily nitrogen, 60 pounds of nitrogen for every 60 pounds of nitrogen you have out there. If everything else is adequate, you'll produce a bale per acre. Okay, great. Well, it's a great uh, study and looks like uh, you look forward to another 30, almost 40 years out here. That's right, hopefully. All right, appreciate it.